Who sings that? Point of entry. Uh, okay. Namaste. Let's start this practice by sitting in a very comfortable sitting position. Start breathing through your nose and connecting with your throat. Connecting your index finger with your thumb and let the breath start taking over for this moment. We're going to connect with that source of wholeness, love, and awareness. Purna Mantra helping us to connect with the whole, realizing we are complete, we are whole, when we focus in, in that place in our life. Take a deep breath and let the breath just infuse and bring the chest and shoulders even bigger because you inhale a little bit more. And when you exhale, release all the breath and the body will come back down into normal. Because every time you inhale, you bring the body a little bit bigger, full of oxygen, life, prana. And you exhale fully, surrender completely into the sense of letting go. And again, you breathe again, and you bring all that aliveness, passion for life, energy, consciousness. And you exhale, and you release, and you let go into the same energy. Continue with a couple times with that for a couple seconds and let the breath be very very much the most important part of this moment. Stay with your breath what I bring into your class, the energies that we're going to work today. Today we start a new cycle that we call Sulking. Sulking is a combination of the 20 Mayan seals with the 13 Mayan tones. When we combine that, that both, we're going to create, or it's going to be created, 260 different unique energies for every day. From today until nine months later, which is 260 days. What we're going to experience from today is we're going to start a new huge wave when it's going to take us into another place, depending on many things. If you create something that you are aware, then you're going to work with this for a, a long time, nine months. It's very amazing because you're going to create a sense of you have a goal, nine months ago, and you have the patience and love to just working in that direction. Sometimes when we see life as an eternity, we don't realize that we live between cycles, between cycles of 24 hours of the day, or between cycles of one week, or the cycle of one month, or the cycle of one year. 
But the Mayans count the cycle of nine months as a representation of human gestation, means that the huge opportunity for all of us to, to get pregnant about something that elevate you into another state of consciousness. I think is now more than never, we have to realize we should not pray for money or for material things. We should pray for freedom of those. For you don't care anymore about that. And you care more about to be simple, to be happy, to be in service, to be no one in some way than making more peace in your mind and more time for yourself. Today, more than ever, we can create a nine-month cycle when you can change yourself completely. Imagine you are that baby, and you are just in one second or one day of gestation, and you will make yourself as a way you want to be. We need to make the effort to be the best version of ourselves, and that is only created by the effort, by the practice, and by continue uh, working in the, pro in the process. Life is not something you're gonna have one thing and then you're happy. No, we are never gonna arrive anywhere. Means if you get tired now, just take a couple deep breaths and just realize life is a practice. Be happy is a practice. Be healthy is a practice. Eat, eat healthy, is a practice, means life is itself a small practices that hold the, the experience of the human uh, being be like a miserable, full of pain, drama, sorrow, and mental pain, or can be a experience of a yogi or yogini who live and wake up with the sun, breathing the air, change the way they think. Uh, release all the needs and, and excess of the personality and start getting more sadvic, more centered, more, more sadvic, more balance within you. Because when you are in that state of balance, you are vibrating in a very high vibration. When you are in high vibration, you are protected for everything. And even say that, is very good because if you are in high vibration, your vibration will heal and protect many people around you. Imagine if we all get there, we're gonna extend that sense and, and no sense, the real vibrational protection of love and appreciation for who we are or who we are or who I am right now. We're gonna start inhaling in three parts, just to bring the energy up, the prana up into the body. Inhale the first part, stop. Inhale the second part. Inhale fully up. Exhale completely. In one full exhalation. Next time you inhale, we're gonna separate the breath in three parts. Inhale one part. Inhale the second part, stop. Inhale the top of the breath and exhale fully one full exhalation. Let's stay there for a couple minutes. Inhale, remember everything I just telling you. Divide the breath in three parts. Be focused in that separation. Pranayama means we are focused in how we manage the breath. And the more concentration you have in the, in the pranayama cycles, you will get the benefits.
Next time you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Take a moment just to breathe in and out and come back into the sapphic part of your breath. You don't feel tired and you don't feel hyper. You feel this kind of sense of tranquility, balance, stability. And in that space, we rest our energy through the practice. Set the intention for your personal practice and I invite you to set the intention too for the next nine months. Recommendation will be to initiate something to uplift and help your personal development and your development and your spiritual path too. Do that for the next 20 days, non-stop, and create a new habit. And let that seeds of new habits uh, manifest in a beautiful uh, part of your qualities, maybe nine months later. We're going to say three ohms, when one purnamanta to start the class and to send the blessings into the universe. Inhale deep. this new cycle until this new solving. Very good. And let's start standing in front of your mat with your feet, keep distance apart, and hands in front of your heart. We're going to work to have this energy to reverse to create something new for us. Ready? Inhale. Hands in front of your heart. Exhale, release your hands down. Inhale, arms up. Push your heels down and put your hands together. Look up and lengthen. From the hips up and pushing and heels down. Exhale, swing right. When you're going down, start inner rotating your legs. How do you do that? Pushing your heels away from each other. Inhale, look up. Feel the hips get wide and more space. Exhale, bow. When you bow, bend your elbows to the side. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, but maintain the legs squeezing strongly. That will help you for you to bring the navel up, rib cage up, and keep the kidneys up. Inhale, look up, arm rotate your arms, melting from your heart, and exhale, step back to plank pose. Lean forward in plank pose. Holding there for a second, make sure every part of your hand is totally connected with the mat, and every fingertip is totally wide. Slowly bend your elbows, melting hard. Go halfway down and slowly down to the floor. 
Interlace your hands behind your back. Squeeze your shoulders back. Now push every toenail down to the floor and back means pushing down and back into your hips while you're lifting the chest as much as you can. Keep breathing and keep looking up as much as you can. Good. Exhale, release down. Put your hands in this pose we call S-fin pose. Put your elbows under your shoulders, hands flat on the floor. Again, put the toenails down to the floor and bring the toes in. That creates like a, something is pulling you and the heels pulling back. Now the hands down and back, open the chest and creating a huge length of the spine. Take a couple deep breaths, look neutral, but the eyes looking up. Maintain the awareness in your arms pushing down and snapping back into the hips and the toenails pushing down and snapping back into the heels. You create like an internal machine of creating a space between everything. Release down and we're going for cobra pose. Keep the same action in your legs and toes. Shoulders up to your ears, side body long. And now you create the same we did in SP pose. We now put the hands back, elbows back, shoulders back and down, palas back, eyes looking up, and you increase the power of your breath. Make sure the pinky toe is active and pulling back into the hips. Exhale, flow back, and we're going back into down dog. First down dog of the day. Take a deep breath when you move in, bend one knee, bend the other. Now, put your feet uh, hip distance apart, heels apart, bend your knees. Arch lower back and now push your head back. You push your head back strongly and you arch in the lower back like you want to touch your sacrum with your head. More. Good. From there, inhale. Exhale. Bring your right foot forward. Left foot forward. Fingertips five inches in front of you. If you can see me, I'm no leaning back, I'm leaning forward. Inhale, length. When you exhale, bend your elbows. Push your navel up. Inhale, rise up. Hands together. Exhale, swing back. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step or jump back. Chaturanga, Tadurasana. Going to high cobra and go back to down dog. Five deep and strong ujjayi breaths. Keep the breath as strong then your uh, your alignment means you are connected with the movement and with the breath. Right foot forward between your hands. So much under to the right. We're gonna put the left hand and reach up. What reach up means? You lifting, you put all the knuckles on the floor, your fingers looking to the side, and the palm up. Right foot forward, um, right foot open 45 degrees, right hand, right knee. Inhale, squeeze the legs into the midline. Exhale, extend the energy out. I push my knee away and I extend my arm completely. My head, my eyes are open all the time. The back leg going into goofy foot means you either rotate your leg mm -hmm. and you can lift in the right heel if you feel you are stable and you breathe deeply. Come back to the center. A step back. If you are a beginner, maybe you don't need to do um, 
vinyasa, you can just switch legs, no problem. Left foot forward between your hands. Reach up with your right hand. Open your left foot 45 degrees. Left hand, left knee. Inhale, squeeze. Legs into the midline. Exhale, head back. Inhale, squeeze a little bit more. Exhale. Another deep breath. Inner rotate the back leg. You can lift in left heel up if you did in the other side. And come back to the center. Vinyasa. Vinyasa means you lean forward. You maintain your core strong. You're lifting up into high cobra. You have a couple breaths. Remember your toes back and in. Flow back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, five deep and strong breaths. Inhale and exhale. Left foot, uh, right foot forward between your hands. Parsvakunasana. Back heel down and in. You can use a block or not, depends on your practice. Um, I like blocks because you have more space and you can breathe even deeply, deeply. Inhale and bring your left arm over the head. Inhale, squeeze the legs into the midline. Exhale, push the legs strongly down and deepen the twist. Maintain your eyes open and your breath with you all the time. Remember, your intention is to rebirth or create the space from this class to create something new in your life. Vinyasa, push up, cobra, down, down. Left foot forward between your hands, back heel down and in. Keep your hand outside of your left foot. Belly in, scoop your tailbone. Bring your right arm over the head and extend your arm. If you can bring your head and bring the arm a little bit more back and look up into the sky, maintain the breath with you. The whole point of this practice is breathe through, your, through the movement. That is the most challenging part of the practice. Exhale, Venus. Five deep Ujjayi breaths. Increase the volume of your breath, allowing the breath uh, warm up the, the body. Bring prana, bring oxygen, alkalize your body. It's, it's healing. Every breath you do it, uh, and this kind of quantity of breath and doing yoga poses are super, super empowered for all of us. It's super healthy. Right leg back, three legged up, lean forward. Push your head up, go halfway down, push back strong. Right foot forward between your hands. Both hands in your frame. Re-engage your legs. Belly in and up. Bring your arms up. And let's bring the arm forward. Dish level one. Scoot your shoulders back. And then arms look up. At the same time, you put the arms. Now exhale, melting your hips. Inhale, squeeze the back leg into the midline. Exhale, melting the hips forward and down. Inhale, bring your shoulders down, no tension in the neck. You keep looking up, and while you melt in your hips, you look back and back and back and back. Inhale, exhale, vinyasa. Left leg back, three legged up, lean forward. Go halfway down, 
Push back strong. Left foot forward between your hands. Both hands in your front knees. Re-engage the legs. Re-engage your core and your rib cage. Arms in front of you. Squeeze your shoulders back. Pala back. Now you look up at the same time you inhale, bring the arms and eyes up. Inhale, squeeze the legs. Release shoulders down, but lifting heart and start going deeper back. Feel the whole body going back, but at the same time, you bring the pelvis forward and down. Three more breaths. Go as deep as you can breathe. And exhale, vinyasa. Right leg back, three legs up, lean forward, go halfway down, push back strong, right foot forward between your hands. Now we bring the arms up. We are here, we know how to come back into the armpits, and then bend your right hand and bring your right hand behind the neck. And bring your left hand and bring the arm inside your leg. Mm -hmm. Open heart, square hips and shoulders. Exhale, keep the head up like your head, your arm, everything lifting while the hips melting down. Keep walking the back fingertips into the heel. Bend your front knee a little bit more. Now push your head strongly into your hand. More and more and more, hips down. And vinyasa. Today we're going to do a lot of back bends and we're going to increase the awareness into this kind of back bend. Why? Because dragons, if you see, is some symbolism of the dragon biting their own tail or the snake biting of their own tail. This is what we do to revert a lot of back bends. For sure, we're going to feel like newborn baby. Left leg back, lean forward, go halfway down. Push back strong, left foot forward. And we're going into that space when it's really like very uh, open. We're going up, belly in, and here. You can oops, bring the left arm behind the head, and now start moving your right arm. I like to put my right arm inside the inner right inner thigh. If I do this, I help a little bit my leg rotate it in, and then start walking fingertips back. Stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. Open heart. Push head back. And vinyasa. Today we have the energy of the mother too, because this kind of sense of birth and rebirth and create something new is involved the mother who really is the one to create us. Uh, today is a very good day to mother yourself, like be very nurtured, very, very uh, sweet, like a mother. Imagine you are the mother, the divine mother, and you take care of yourself today and of course every day right foot forward between your hands now we're going into warrior one but with this variation arms in front squeeze shoulders back interlace two finger interlace hands behind the back first thing we do side body long Squeeze the arms into the head. When you pinch the head with your arms, and when you exhale, keep from the hips up into the sky and from the hips down, down into the earth. And going into this kind of strong breath just to create awareness and softness in your heart. Now 
you will, will you need to feel here more opening in the upper back and no pain at all in any of the back legs. Exhale, keep the hands in the same position, but now the difference is you just lifting the arms up, press the neck slightly down while the neck pushing up into the hands. And you look forward. Both legs straight, hands down to the floor for a standing split. Stay with your breath. The whole idea is you bring this kind of sense of calmness and security into every pose, stability. Now press your hands five inches in front of you and jump into your hands then. And exhalation, and you attempt two, three times. You have a wall, use your wall. And let's put forward between your hands. Take a couple of breaths. And we're going into another warrior. Re-engage your legs. Arms in front, and then bring your arms back into the shoulders. Now, entrelace hands. Now your shoulder blades are already engaged. Now bring the arms in to the head, lifting hard, look up, twist the up and back, and melting your right hip as much as you can. Exhale. Inhale, re-engage, legs midline. Exhale, push the head, hips down. Three more breaths. Inhale, lifting the hip as a little bit higher. Exhale, bring the weight into the right foot, lifting the left leg to warrior three, Vira Madrasana three. Now, elbows lifting up, belly up, ribcage up, and head slightly pushing up into your hands. Couple breaths, both hands down to the floor, a standing split. Keep the split solid for you. Make sure you're engaging the legs. It's not about the stretching, it's about engaging. It's about how much you can hold yourself, you can embrace yourself safe. Hands lean forward, inner rotate your, and the leg is up and keep through your heel and right big toe. Mm -hmm. And vinyasa, cobra, flow back, down dog. Right foot forward between your hands. Back heel down in triangle pose. Straight your front leg. Bring your right arm out. Belly in. Rib cage up. And arm up. Head back. Keep the legs, both, both legs totally straight and engaged. Head back. No twist in the head. No twist in the head. Chin down. There you get back from there. Good. Then you can look up. From here, bend your knees. Inhale, warrior two. Inhale deeply. Exhale, Bada Parsva Konasana. Right arm entering the inner rotation of the right arm. And lifting the left shoulder. <clears throat> Bring your arm behind the back. Head back and stay very strong with your legs and with your breath. Your bandhas, active means mula banda, pelvic floor all the time, lifting and engaging. Both hands down, 
You can go simple vinyasa or going into Eka Parakum Vinyasa. Going to the right foot, slightly to the right, and you bring the awareness and push your right knee strongly into the right elbow. Lifting the left leg up until you're going into your next pose. And bend your knees and come back. And we're resting in child's pose. Down dog. <laughs> Left foot forward between your hands. Triangle to the left side. <coughs> keep the both legs straight and keep the awareness about to squeezing the legs into the midline. And when you exhale, you feel this kind of huge opening and extension in your heart, in your legs. I can say it's one of my favorite poses. I feel like my whole heart is open to life, open to a new possibilities, to nurture myself, to be in the energy of new beginning. Bend your knee and going into warrior two. Inhale, exhale, bring the arm back. Now, right shoulder up into the ear. This is very important. Lifting the shoulder up and then slowly bring the arm back and hold as much as you can even to your wrist. Now breathe. Both hands down to the floor. Eka para kundinyasana. You just move the left foot to the side until the foot lifting, and you can stay here and just breathe for five. You can go into the full pose, lifting up, chest down as much as you can, chest down, chest down, chest down, and keep chest down. There you go. Mm -hmm. Go back and down the five. Keep on strong. Ujjayi breaths. We go into Urva Kalyasana. Bring your right foot forward and open both legs into. Now we're going to open the toes into outside of your mat. And open your knees first, and then bring the knees back and sitting bones back. Inhale deep. Keep the knees keep the knees pushing back while you start scooping tailbone. Don't let the knees come forward. And bring the elbows back. Hold the elbows with both hands. And now bring the belly bottom back into your forearms. And rib cage back down into the back of the body. Keep everything you get, have now and lifting the arms up. Interlace the last two fingers, squeeze the arms into the head, and with the core strong and leaning back, you start going down in every exhalation. Don't go so fast because you can burn yourself. Be humble in the practice. Don't show off. The showing off is the ego. The one doesn't need to Go perfect is the self because it's perfect already. Inhale, point your toes forward, arch your lower back, keep the head neutral and the arms extended. Both hands down to the floor. Inhale, lengthen the spine, push your heels apart. Side body long as much as you can and bring the hands in line with your feet and bring your toe head in between the hands. And five deep breaths.
Inhale, keep the arms exactly how they are, but lifting up. Hold the big toes. Exhale, bring the head in the same place, but now bending your elbows and squeezing your shoulder and bring the shoulders away from your ears. Inhale, look up, side body long, exhale, you can go a little bit deeper and keep the engagement in your inner thigh. Nice, come back into the center and we Move the body to the front of the mat and squat down with the big toes together. Bring the elbows, arms inside. Scan the yoga in the scan style or dynamic alignment. We used to put the knees outside of your arms. No, on top. It's outside or your arms in, whatever way you understand. Now lean forward. And let's use the inner thighs just to take us into the pose. Let's stay there for five breaths. You can go to headstand, tripod headstand. Sasana too, or you can go back into child's pose and rest. When we rest, we rest in the energy of the mother love, we rest in the energy of the divine mother within. It's like imagine we are the mother and we are the key and we have just to take care of that kid that we have internally and be nice with that person is inside and compassionate and loving. Good. We're going to lay down in the belly and resting one fist on top of the other and just put your chin or your forehead and move and wiggle your hips side to side. Good, now we're gonna set the hands like we're going into push up or cobra, I'm sorry. And we're going to get prepared for this imaginary <laughs> cobra. We're going to shoulders up. We're going to prepare exactly the same. Even you can help with your hands a little bit. But when you're ready, just lifting hands and lifting feet. Big toes together. Heels apart. Stay with your breath. Now, the hands lifting up. Up, up, up. Looking up. Shoulders up and down. A smile for no reason. One more deep breath and resting in this pose for five breaths. Visualize a um, healing, warm, healing light every time you inhale and bring that healing light into the kidneys. Now, bring your hands with the thumbs looking down, like you touch your legs to the side, forehead down to the floor. We're going up in this position in this way. Put the legs together, big toes. Now, belly in, rotate in, side body long, and lifting up. Now, sp spread your toes and bring the heels apart, but keep pushing into the midline with the 
big toes. Now, pinky finger lifting up, all your triceps lifting up, your head looking up, everything up, and release. And release completely. Surrender all control into the mother. We have just one mother, there's the Divine Mother. And the representations of many mothers, planet, moon, our biological mother, all the mothers we have around the world, they're loving us as a mother. But the most important mother is when you discover your own inner mother, and you don't need another mother again. Inhale, we're going into the next one, which is with the arms or thumbs looking up. Here the head will be more neutral and we're going to be uh, working more uh, lifting the arms from the thumbs and lifting the legs. Inhale, uh, forehead down. Engage your legs or everything and now go up. And head neutral, arms up, look up. Eyes looking up. Lifting up. Two more breaths, and thumbs up. No, not like this, up. Good, and release, good. Now, we're gonna put the hands with the palm facing down. If you see, we need to move a little bit the body to put the hand, then I will be on top of my hand, the other side. Now here, just close your eyes, or oh, no, don't close your eyes, just look into the tip of your nose, take a deep breath, and start pushing your arms so strongly that the legs will lift in. Five breaths over there. Just think about pushing your hands and just feel the legs lifting by themselves. Release, slow mm. back, and we're going now into a high cobra. High cobra is two feet, one on top of the other, forehead, knees, mat apart, and we breathe here for five times. Come back into the breath and bring yourself back into your intention. arm to the side. Um, if I re highly recommend you have blocks, straps, blankets into the practice because we'll helping you and, and if you, in some moment you need some kind of support. I like to do this pose with a block for my head. Means I'm gonna lay down to the floor, we're gonna put the right arm up to the side, maybe I'm gonna do in this way. And now I start moving my body to the right side. I put one foot, then I bring the other foot down before I'm going anywhere. Just I'm lifting and move my hips a little bit back into the center. Now with the heels rooting down, I'm inhale and I'm going, if it's possible, to entrelace hands behind. Uh, Sometimes you think it's very far away, I highly recommend it. if you lift in your hand, fingers, you will find out your hand. Now, push your head back and stay there for a beautiful and delicious shoulder opening.
when we're going out, just going out in the same way. Just release the hand, bring the hand for support, extend the legs, come back into the center, but don't move from the, from the pose. Stay there. Just keep the synovial fluid, go back into the joint. And let's prepare for the second side. Palm facing up. Now, move your right body on top of the left. One foot, left foot. If the knees or putting the knees up is so difficult, don't do it. Just do one or, or don't do it until you feel more open. Inhale deep, exhale. Stay with your breath. Let all the weight of your body just resting in your shoulders or in the left shoulder in this moment and feel like a, that is a self-love massage. Come back into the center. And again, just stay there for one breath. And lay down into a to the floor. Cobra. Flow back. Down dog. And lay down in the stomach again. Now we're gonna put the hands like as been pose. Knees are gonna be together. Feet are going to be pushing down, means everything is strongly aware of pushing down into the mat. Inhale, I'm going to bring my right hand and to the left elbow, and I'm going to bring my left arm inside the left foot. The first thing I do is to kick back. I hold my big toe, and I kick back strongly from there. I lift inside body up. And when I exhale, I pivot my hand or elbow up into the sky, and I keep this kind of squaring in my hips and my shoulders. Shoulders, Left shoulder should go down, chest will forward, and breath is with you. Your eyes look up. And you have this kind of big sensation of the opening in the sacrum, in the front of the pelvis, stretching your thigh. And release, or going up. Um, I think it's Darren and me, we are tired today. <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep the level one, and let's keep it like this. Uh, yeah, that is a good point. Uh, when you practice in your home, and let's see, it's a, a, a level that you will feel a little tired. Just uh, modify as much as you can. Always listen the body. You don't need to be every time or every day open or flexible or happier. But uh, listen the body, try to put the body in a very good state. Kick back, open up, and stay with your breath, pivot your right elbow up and push through your hand down into the hip. Square hips, the square shoulders. And release. Go back down. We want to maintain a little bit the, the back bend. This is why uh, we are no recommend to get flat on the floor. It's better to keep two hands and a, a little elevation, which is an elevation, to keep the, the spine with heat and circulation for the back bends. Because we're gonna do more and more and more, we want to just keep the back warm up and ready for more. Good, we're going into Dhanurasana. Uh, place the hands to the sun. Learn to like this. this. And hold the uh, ankle 
ankles or the top of your feet. Now, the best thing you can do before you go in anywhere, keep the knees together and push the knees down, slim bones up, belly in, scoop tailbone. And now push your toes back and lifting with the strength of your feet. Don't let the feet be numb, just flex it and open. Every time you inhale, you can lift in the heels. And every time you exhale, you melt in heart. Inhale, lifting heels. <laughs> and heart, three more. Lifting heels a lot. One more. Release and flow back. Child's pose. We wanna, this is a, a counterbalance, but we don't want so deep, we keep the higher, the high, you can even use your block if you, it's very comfortable. And when you finish your fifth breath, flow with a vinyasa. And we prepare for pigeon pose. We're going into another hip opener back bend. Have all your toy support, blankets, everything you need. Bring your knee in line with the outside of your mat. Walk your back leg two inches in, two inches back, and check if you don't see your leg will be even better. Like it's very high. I'm gonna use my block to use help for length. Inhale, I open up. I feel strong in my knees and my legs, my core means I open my arms and I look up and extend my heart into the new cycle, into the new nine month cycle of awareness, creation. Bring the right hand in front of you or to the right side. I like the center because I'm always looking for midline. My body needs midline alignment. Inhale, kick the leg back. When side body long and then bring the elbow super close into your side and bring the elbow up when you have that the square hips maintain the core in the breath look up now inhale bring the uh, leg back and let the arm going very far away back and now bring back And you can maintain the leg into the foot pose or the tight stretch. I went to the foot pose today because I have a strap and I did a level one a technique, which is just learn to bring the elbow up into the, the pose. When you finish five breaths, just bring yourself back down. Make sure the sensation is always in your hip. No sensations in the knee. If you feel any sensations in the knee, what you do is you're sitting back and just go like this. And just keep it open and stretching the hip. No problem. Come back to the center. Do vinyasa or just switch your legs. You can skip vinyasas for maybe uh, one, two, three weeks. And after three weeks, my, my recommendation is don't skip vinyasas because vinyasas helping us to get stronger and to clean up the energy of the pose and going into another pose. Now, when you're set with your alignment, you check with your back leg, you check with your knee. Now, I will repeat the same thing I did on the right. 
Uh, inhale, I'm scissoring my legs, <coughs> bringing the babies up, Mula Banda, super strong core. I feel strong today. I open my arms and I rotate my arms to the side, and my heart is first. We call that open to grace. Now, bring your hand into the block and bend your back foot. Let's go for parts right now. You hold your, your foot and kick back first. Kick back as much as you can. Now, if you have to strap like me, put your palm facing up and start bringing the elbow in and up. Or stay like that and a tie a simple or not simple, but yeah, simple tie stretch. <laughs> Head up. If you are with your strap, kick back and you two direct kick back and the inhalation. Exhale, breathe forward. One more time, kick back a little bit more, open, lifting up. Exhale, then lean forward. And release. Both hands, inhale deep, exhale, forward bend. When you're going to forward bend, you keep the shoulders square, your belly in, and your forehead down. Stay with your breath. Don't let the breath disappear in your practice. When the breath disappears, if you left the practice, you went some, somewhere else. This is why yoga is not difficult, because you have to be present. Present with your practice, present with your breath, present with the pose, present with your intention, it's cool. Be with you, you and you. No. Now we're sitting down. I'm gonna do this to the front. Now I'm do two in the same way, like this. I'm looking this way. For people see how you do it. Good. We're gonna put the left foot in line with the mat. Means both legs are like a square. Your right knee in line with your heel, and your le right heel in line with your knees. The tendency will be this leg going in. Means make sure you put the, hip, the knee out. Inhale, side body long, put your left hand back and fingertips. And when you exhale, as you see Darren, uh, he has the knee elevated, means what he does is just lean back, tilt the pubic bone down and head back, and you pull the leg out, and down. But here the work is in the breath, it's, it's not in the leg or in the hip, it's in the, in the arching of the lower back and create that kind of space. Now if your knees down, uh, lean forward, cross arms and push your hands in the mount of your big toe and push strongly out into your hands and your hands back into the center. Come back up, inhale, switch your legs. Good. Right hand fingertips, inhale, open up, side body long, exhale, forward bend. Lean forward, or stay there, and, and stay with your breath. We're never looking pretty much for to the pose, because the pose, the perfect pose, is the pose you are breathing. If you are here, this is your pose. If you are here, this is your pose. If you are here, this is your pose. Come back into the center. We 
para bem estar com a né? With upavista konasana, uh, if your hips are no arching, it's very good to sit in, in a block. To sit in a block, uh, you're gonna have that kind of length, uh, and your legs are well in a rotate perfectly, it's more comfortable. Inhale deep, arch your lower back, fingertips back, and when you exhale, Lean forward, but keep the navel in rib cage in, protecting all the time you are with your bandas. And then fingertips forward, and then slowly you bring the chest forward. Now, we want the, arm, the spine straight more than curved, means keep the arm straight here for a couple classes, maybe here for a couple of classes and when you feel the spine is getting straight you will know when to bring the forehead down to the floor. Inhale up exhale going into the right keep the core super strong head and the left leg now is pushing strongly, like 200% more for this pose to keep the balance in the pose. Stay with your core, with your breath. Inhale deep. Exhale, let's do the other side. Increase the volume of your breath. And come back into the energy of this new beginning. Take a time today to, to write down what you really, really want to, to manifest in your life from a space of abundance and joy. Come back to the center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bow. One more time. Keep the legs, and this time, put your elbows. When you inhale, bring the toe down, inner rotate your legs, and bring the legs in. And when you exhale, arm rotate your uh, legs, like pinky toe moving out, and you push your heels apart. Inhale, inner rotate. Exhale, arm rotate and push heels apart, energetically. One more time. And exhale, step hands back. You can hold your knees under and bring the legs into mat apart. We're going into shoulder uh, opening. We put the thumbs looking forward and then thumb looking down. Bring the fingertips in the other side. Exhale. Release your jaw, release your mouth. And then stay there for three more breaths. When you finish the third breath, hands back, arch your lower back, shoulders up and back, and then head pushing back. And again, open the mouth, release your jaw muscles or your air, any tension of your face and neck. Come back into the center. Two options. Uh, here it's very good to measure and to put the hands looking forward. Uh, beginners, lifting with the knees bent, uh, pelvis in line with the knees, chest in line and head back. If you feel you have the 
the whole opening to put your big toe pushing down, then you're going into the pose. Purvottanasana, stay there for three more breaths. Come back down and vinyasa. Sit down or jump back into the sitting position. Here we're going into the right foot on top of the left. Fingertips back, inhale, arch your lower back, side body long. Exhale, bring the sitting bones close to your left heel. Bring your left hand very close to your spine. Uh, to allow the sitting bones are moving forward. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, deepen the twist. Stay there for level one. It's, it's good enough to put your elbow side of your right arch of your foot and lengthen and look very far away of your left shoulder, belly in and out. Come back and let's do the other side. Put the left foot on top of your right knee. Inhale, side body long. Exhale, get close into your right, the sitting bones close to your right heel. Now, right hand and fingertips are on, uh, and the more length, better. Left arm up, belly in and up. Navel in, exhale, and twist. Now maintain the seam bones leaning forward and you look very far away of your right shoulder. Come back to the center, vinyasa. and lay down into your back. Bring your knees into your chest and take a little massage side to side. Releasing all the tension of the lower back, middle back, and the more you press your knees into your face, even a little bit in the upper back. Now legs up, and 90 degrees extending with the feet flexed. Now, elbows and interlace hands behind your neck. Inhale, neutral will be on the floor. Exhale, bring your left leg. Here is a key. Left leg with this, spreading, spreading your toes, going down with action while you're lifting the elbows into your right knee. Inhale, go back center. Exhale, do the opposite side. Inhale, we're going 11 times, 10 more. Always hold when you touch the knee, holding there for two seconds.
two more. One more to that. And rest your heels down. You can bring the knees back into your chest. And prepare for bridge pose, Setubanda, Shatankasana. We want to put the feet um, hip distance apart, no more open, no more close. And let the toes point in and the heels out. When we're going up, this will be more in alignment. Now, uh, hands flat on the floor, palm facing up. Ash your lower back. In. Belly in, tailbone in, lifting up. Push your hands strongly down to help your heels lift in the spine. And now interlace hands behind your back. Squeeze your shoulders back. And when you get set at the pose, now push your heels down and back with your hips while your knees pointing forward and in. Chest open into the chair and to the face and face away from the chest looking back. Three more breaths. And when you finish five, release pelvis down, release arms, knees together and hands in prayer position. Bring gratitude for your life for something is already perfect and happy. Perfect in your life. Now set your hands, or you can repeat the same bridge. You can do that three times, or you can go into a deep back bend. We prepare the whole class for back bends, means let's do it. Set your hands. In line with your uh, ears, under your shoulders. We're going arch your lower back, belly in and up. Scoop your tailbone. Inhale, lifting pelvis, chest, and head. Exhale there. Readjust, roll your shoulders back, nose forward. Inhale, arms up. Five deep breaths. After five, look up, bring your chest, uh, upper back, middle back, hips down, and put your hands in your heart and in your flexor. And allow to rest in, in the energy of the love of the mother, nurturing yourself with your awareness, with your time, with your dedication to the things uh, helping you to be good. We're going again. This time you can add push-ups or you can go even into a deeper back bend. How we go deeper back? When we're going up, we're going to walk the hands in, your feet a little bit in, and maybe we can put the, a little bit more awareness and open the chest. Set your hands, set your feet, arch lower back, belly in, ribcage in, no, no, no. Belly in, scoop tailbone and start lifting the body. Inhale. Now, shoulder distance. Move your head close to your heels. You can lift in the heels and now you can go to a deeper back. Stay there for five. You can bring your head down in and feel the extension. Five deeper. After five, come back down and come back into 
the gratitude practice, which is to bring into this moment something you are grateful for. Now we're going into shoulder stand, legs up, or whatever inversion you want to do at this moment. Move the body, your legs up into, into shoulder stand. behind the head and entrelace your hands behind the back. Bend your knees and squeeze your ears with your knees, kind of dance them. And slowly go back into the center. Bring your legs down into the floor. Use your hands to reduce the speed of your legs and going into fish bowls. Use your elbows like a leverage for lifting the chest up. I like to keep tall like this. And I start moving your chest forward. Now bring your crown of the head on the floor and lifting up into intense falls. Five breaths. And release the pose. And lay down in your back. We're going now for the restorative process. Get ready with your oils or your eye pillows or whatever you're going to use for your Shavasana. Right leg up to the sky. Interlace hands behind your hamstrings. Keep your leg strongly to your arms, arching your lower back as much as you can. You're going to do this. Like this for all of you to see. Now, strong left side of the body, bring your right leg close to your face, hold your right big toe, and with the core super strong and your left arm on top of your left quadricep, you open slowly to the right, but don't let the left side lift me. Inhale, the same leg up, just switch your hands. If you need a strap, use the straps. And open to the side. Keep pushing through the heels. Both heels are extending energy and your right hip moving down and open. Come back to the center. We're going now to the 
other leg. Interlace hands behind your hamstring. Bring the leg, keep the leg down. Strongly arch and keep the leg so much that you feel you putting back every muscle to the bone. Inhale deep. Now bring the leg without releasing muscle energy. Hold your left big toe. And by holding the left side of the body strong, you open to the side and just breathe. Inhale, the same leg up, and we go to the other side. And breathe. This is a very, very sometimes painful pose, but the pain is not about something wrong. It's just oh, the opening, the tightness of our hip is open up. Breathe even more deeply in that moment. Come back into the center, happy baby pose. Let's go with one leg first. Use the right knee. Uh, it's easier just to bring one knee down and push the knee down while you're breathing. Come back into the other side and now bring the left knee and release the right leg. Now come back into the center and bring both hands in with the L, uh, holding the heel. Inhale deeply. Exhale, bring both knees down to the floor while you're pushing back into your hands 5% for 5 breaths. After five, take a deep breath in and bring the right leg or heel close to your forehead and extend your other leg. If you feel flexible today or more, put the leg behind the head. But the option can be two in the forehead, no problem. But breathe. And switch. Inhale deep, exhale. Maintain the core strong. Inhale, both heels into the forehead. Come back into the center, both knees together. Inhale deep. Exhale, both knees to the right. And you look to the left. Inhale, knees up. Exhale, both knees to the left and you're going to the right. And exhale, fully melting the body down into the, into the mat. Now come back for Shavasana. In Shavasana, we're gonna open the legs. We're gonna open the legs, mat apart. We're even a little bit wide apart, okay? You can bring the shoulders in and the palm facing up. Make sure every part of your body is super comfortable. If you feel something in the lower back, elevate your knees in a blocks or in a bolster or in a pillows or blanket. Uh, if you feel the neck is bothering you, you can make a little roll for your neck, like a neck pillow. And put something in your eyes, then cover the light 
and you're just going into five minutes uh, withdraw and, and bring the senses uh, into a peaceful state. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to think about anything. You don't need even to breathe in any way. Uh, what Shavasana means is core pose means you just let go control and you let go outcomes. You just die into the present moment. Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth like ah. Inhale through your nose. Slowly, just to bring your awareness back inside your body. Start bringing your, moving your toes and your fingers. And next time you inhale, you bring your arms behind the head, stretch your legs, and bring your knees up into the chest. Take a little massage side to side. And knees rolling to the right, the body roll to your right. And you rest in there for, for a couple breaths. And sitting up in meditation posture with your eyes closed. And your hands in front of your heart. 
come back into the beginning of the class when you have the awareness of you have the possibility to create a new life, a new cycle, a new way of being. Let the connection with the new energy be with you for the rest of the 260 days. And continue with your practices, continue with the new practice that you're going to bring into your life, maybe today, and keep it for the next 20 days. Have a wonderful uh, period of rebirth. And for set everybody's intention and close the class, we're going to say one thing. In healthy. Oh.